What's up, New Zealand and the world? Lucas Lawman's Kiwi Voice. Thanks once again for taking the time to come and hang out with us as we take a deep dive into the Public Interest Journalism Fund, probably one of the most talked about and referenced pieces of government funding in the internet age. The Public Interest Journalism Fund has been heavily criticised since its inception, specifically during the pandemic years 2020 to 2022, as masses of the general populace became hungry for information while having all the time in the world to look for it uh, as they were shut in their homes. The PM's daily briefings from the podium of truth, we all remember those, and the apparent lack of pushback from the media fueled the distaste of this uh, public interest journalism fund even more, with accusations of outright bias and propaganda becoming the norm, at least in the freedom community. Good, unbiased journalism, traditionally known as the fourth estate, is essential to not just a functioning democracy, but a thriving one. I think we all know that. Journalists' number one duty is to hold power to account and challenge it, either corporate, state or otherwise. Regardless of the massive loss of trust in the mainstream media over the last couple of decades, and specifically the last three years, journalism, when done properly, is still held in very high regard as a noble, as a noble and essential pursuit. These deep-seated and cultural ideals in the general populace most likely explain the emotional and sometimes downright visceral reaction in some quarters to this fund. There have been various stories and opinion pieces written around this, ironically, in the same publications and by the same journalists and columnists who were paid out of the fund, more so in favour and or downplaying any potential bias that might occur from any conditions that might be required to receive the funds. Independent or alternate media, there's got a number of names, some people say citizen journalists, some people say whatever, has had it covered a number of times with the BFD, the platform and the Daily Examiner doing pieces as well. So what's the issue? Is it normal for journalism to be state funded or is the favourable reporting required to receive the funds the main concern? And what is that exactly? It's time for an explainer. The Public Interest Journalism Fund was established in 2021. The government said at the time to preserve and enhance public interest journalism that will otherwise be lost due to the impact of COVID-19 on newsrooms. Now to me, how does COVID-19 have an impact on newsrooms? Other than not being able to travel, it's beyond me. In fact, when you think of the mileage that the mainstream media has actually got out of the COVID narrative and the shock and awe campaign that they have run, including lockdowns and being in front of the internet for far longer periods as well, you could logically argue in the counter to that narrative. It would have enhanced their business. We will touch on that further in a moment. According to the New Zealand On Air website, they will fund public interest journalism through a three-year package designed to support at-risk journalism. The Public Interest Journalism Fund is a ring-fence stream with a New Zealand media fund designed to provide targeted short- to medium-term support for public interest journalism. The three pillars of the pu Public Interest Journalism Fund are project funding for tightly defined projects delivered to a deadline, similar to those funded through the New Zealand Media Fund factual stream, Role-based funding, supporting newsrooms for the employment of reporters, clearly tied to content outcomes. Industry development funding, including cross-industry cadetships and targeted upskilling initiatives. You may have seen the hundreds and hundreds of New Zealand roles that have been advertised as part of this process, mainly at stuff.co.nz with titles like Local Democracy Reporter. They have popped up all over the country with 55 roles of, out of round two of the funding being made available at Stuff, Radio New Zealand and NZME alone at a cost of $9.3 million. But everyone from Woman Magazine to North and South and even multi-billion dollar company Discovery, owner of News Hub, they all got, got in on the action. Now New Zealand on their states that role-based funding is designed to support the revitalisation of the industry to address new deserts and deficits in coverage of matters of importance to New Zealanders. Statistics New Zealand figures show that the number of journalists halved between 20, or sorry, 2006 and 2018. Funding journalists back into newsrooms, particularly at a regional level and local level, will help redress the drastic reduction in journalist numbers over the past few years and ensure the sector has the workforce to deliver strong public 
interest journalism, says New Zealand owner e head of journalism, Raywin Rash. I hope I pronounced that surname correctly. So why had the number of journalists halved in that period? We've got to ask that question, prompting the government to step in and save the day. Put simply, with the advent of the internet, the population stopped tuning into the daily 6pm news en masse, uh, stopped reading the paper every morning and started engaging in online in a million new and different ways. This has been happening for the good part of 15 odd years. Alternative independent media sources sprung up from everywhere. Anyone could have a voice. Podcasts, newsletters, news sites, commentators, YouTube channels, Facebook pages, independent websites. The choice was absolutely endless. There were really very few barriers to entry. Advertising money did as expected and followed viewers, drastically cutting revenues to the mainstream sources and shifting it to independents that were smart enough to take advantage. In my personal opinion, we should have let this natural evolution take its course. As time went on, the outlets that were shown to be the most trustworthy, accurate, impartial and ready to put in the work would rise to the top, including monetarily. The clickbait-driven, politically motivated, lazy mega outfits would have died slowly and the fourth estate would have come back into balance. Instead, by intervening with certain conditions attached, this Labour government has just made things worse, in my opinion. By decimating what trust was left after the incredibly lopsided and agenda-pushing approach of the COVID years, giving anyone who had even the slightest level of mistrust in the media 55 million reasons to reaffirm those nagging thoughts. So if we can accept that government funding of media outlets in and of itself is going to cause a massive problem in public perception, at least in a large part of the population, obviously not all, then we can begin to understand why things are going as they are in terms of distrust in the media. Regardless of the ethics and morals of the reporters and editors at the organisations that receive the public interest journalism fund money, they may well be pushing shit uphill when it comes to public perception. The New Zealand Taxpayers Union commissioned Curia Market Research, long-time market research company, conduct, to conduct a poll asking, do you think the government funding of private media companies undermines the independence of media, holding the government to account, as we say, their traditional journalistic role? The scientific poll of a thousand New Zealanders was carry out by, carried out by Curia Market Research and found that 59% believe that the funding undermines media independence, compared to just 21% who believe it doesn't. 20% were unsure. Interestingly, the belief this funding was bad for media independence was strong across all major parties, including almost half of the Labour and the Greens at 46 and 43% respectively. That one really caught my eye. Almost half of the Labour and Greens caucus believe that the public interest journalism fund or government money is undefining trust in media. Finally, in a broader query, it, f it was found that 44% of the general public oppose government funding the media, 24% support it, and 32% were unsure. The main issue, other than the funding itself, is what is attached to the funding. That is, what obligations have these media companies signed onto in order to receive the funding? One would argue having any limitations or direction of reporting requirements is a bad thing. But let's look at the specifics. In a column from Stuff.co.nz from May 2021 titled Why Government Money Doesn't Corrupt Our Journalism, their editor-in-chief, Patrick Crudson, is at pains to say the fund is administered by New Zealand On Air, the state's independent media funding agency. New Zealand On Air acts at arm's length from the government of the day and doesn't vet proposals based on whether they're palatable to politicians. The fund incorporates a commitment to Te Tariti o Waitangi, which isn't an issue for staff. Our charter already commits to embed the Treaty of Waitangi principles in our partnership, participation and protection in the ethics and practice of our business. So what does the Public Interest Journalism Fund actual documents say? Under the New Zealand On Air eligibility to apply, page four of the general conditions, the first criteria, the first one states, applicants can show a clear and obvious commitment or intent for commitment to Te Tariti o Waitangi, including a commitment to Te Reo Māori. 
This commitment will enhance public journalism, resulting in stronger Māori representation and greater bicultural collaboration within the wider journalism sector. How this clear and obvious commitment is shown isn't clear, although it goes further to state that New Zealand On Air has commissioned research into the best way to develop a strategy around this, and it provides links on how to access that research, no bias, I'm sure. There are a number of other criteria, as may well be expected in such a funding system. Show a commitment to New Zealand, that you must have journalism experience. That one's a little bit disappointing for me, but there you go. I can understand why it's there, unless you are covering something specialist that might not otherwise be made. It has to be made readily available online. I found that interesting. You have to ensure you keep to broadcasting standards. Have the capability to administrate whatever project you are working on and clearly acknowledge where you got the money from to make it. Where things get interesting for me is the data provision element. It states, applicants must commit to use common metrics where possible in the provision of other audience engagement, output and financial data as required. Section 7 for details. So let's have a look at Section 7. It is essential to the Public Interest Journalism Fund that funded entities return regular and accurate performance metrics to New Zealand on air across all aspects of media distribution of the content. This reporting is an integral requirement of funding and must be considered prior to the applications being made. New Zealand on air will employ a dual system of passive measurement currently through Google Analytics and producers supply data across owned and earned channels outside of their main funded website. So you have to use Google Analytics, provide views, clicks, performance measures for your podcast, Facebook, YouTube, blogs, you name it. You have to demonstrate how you report on it and also provide the metrics after they have occurred. Regardless, you have to do that to get the money. So to summarise, there is no direct conditional link that the recipients of the Public Interest Journalism Fund need report favourably on the government that funded them. Sorry to disappoint a few people out there. I mean, to do so would arguably, arguably be journalism corruption and flat out turning the fourth estate into a propaganda arm of the government. It just would. But to be fair, there are plenty of individual journalists that work for these large organisations that do challenge power, and although still not asking a whole lot of questions that I'm sure a lot of people such as yourselves out there would like asked and answered, they're still better than most. What the Public Interest Journalism Fund has done though, and this is key, it's maybe just as bad depending on how you look at it, it's strip away large chunks of public trust in one of the oldest and traditionally trusted institutions of all, the fourth estate of robust, democratic journalism, by the fact it exists at all and that these large organisations have taken it. Add to this the clear and obvious total bias and lack of narrative questioning around specifically the COVID health policy narrative over the past few years, and you can begin to understand with a little more the situation we find ourselves in. A flourishing independent media Landscape of which I am proud to be a part of and a decline in the new institutions or sorry, news institutions of old. Finally, with regards to the requirement to actively promote the principles of the treaty. Now, this gets a fair bit of airtime. I'll leave you with a quote from Sean Plunkett. He says it far better than I. The fundamental problem we have is that most people wouldn't know what the principles of the Treaty Waitangi are. Because intellectual, academic, political and judicial elites have literally reworked the constitutional framework of this country over the last 20 years without telling the person in the street. So a whole lot of New Zealanders are suddenly consuming a media which has been coerced or willing embraced a vision of New Zealand which is totally at odds, at odds with the reality of their lives. Agree or disagree? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for hanging around for the full yarn. It certainly is an interesting piece of funding that has, in my opinion, and a lot of others, done significant damage to mainstream media public perception and trust, regardless of the actual requirements that they have to meet to receive the funding. Thanks again for tuning in. Share these links around. Get amongst that conversation below. Keep it respectful. I really appreciate all the support is given to me every single day on Kiwi Voice. It really is awesome, team. But for now, stay safe, stay free, and we will see you again 
real soon.